Hello, everyone. Today, let's dive into the fascinating story of Charles Ponzi, a man whose illusion of wealth bewitched minds and who orchestrated one of the most emblematic financial fraud schemes of all time. Caught in the trap of his own malicious ingenuity, Ponzi brilliantly manipulated investors with his deceptive scheme, now known as the Ponzi scheme. Like a magician of illusion, he dangled extraordinary returns in record time, attracting a multitude of souls thirsting for quick and easy wealth. Behind the allure of this miraculous promise lay a very different reality. Behind the scenes of this sophisticated scam, Ponzi wove a web of lies and illusions, exploiting the greed and hope of gullible investors. In this captivating video, we delve into the heart of this scheme, revealing the intricate workings of Ponzi's scheme to fool his victims. You'll discover the reasons why so many people succumb to this illusory temptation, and the devastating consequences this senseless quest for ephemeral wealth had for those who believed in it. Get ready to explore the intricacies of a manipulative mind, uncover the intricacies of a brilliantly devised scam, and understand why the illusion of wealth can sometimes engulf the most discerning among us. Follow us on this fascinating journey, where reality merges with deception and the limits of human greed are severely tested. Charles Ponzi's story begins on March 3, 1882 in Lugo, a small Italian town. In this modest setting, he was born into a family with limited resources, experiencing the difficulties inherent in a precarious financial situation. But from an early age, Ponzi's soul burned with boundless ambition, driven by an unquenchable thirst for success. So, in 1903, at the age of 21, Ponzi decided to take off for the United States, where promises of better economic opportunities were whispering in his ear. He set foot on American soil, in Boston, ready to embrace a new life. His professional beginnings were modest, juggling jobs as a diver and waiter. But despite his determination, these jobs failed to fulfill his financial aspirations. However, while Charles Ponzi was struggling to turn his financial aspirations into reality, fate had a most intriguing detour in store for him. It was at this point, when the horizon of his ambitions seemed slightly clouded, that a new spark lit up his path. A rumor, a spellbinding story, reached his ears, carrying with it the name of Luigi Zarossi, another Italian whose dazzling success in Montreal through the flourishing cigar trade had become legendary. The tale of Zarossi's exploits titillated Ponzi's imagination and, driven by an insatiable appetite for success, he decided to leave Boston to pursue new opportunities. So it was that in July 1907, armed with a single dollar, Ponzi set off for the promising city of Montreal, lured by Zarossi's intoxicating tales. But that wasn't all. Zarossi had also given birth to a sprawling financial institution, the Banca Zarossi, where the savings of Italian immigrants were piled up, lured by a tempting 6% interest rate, far beyond what other banks were offering at the time. Under the guise of Charles Bianchi, a fictitious member of Italy's prestigious Bianchi family, Ponzi cleverly worked his way up through the ranks of Banca Zarossi, first as a modest cashier. But it wasn't long before his all-consuming ambition propelled him to higher spheres within the financial institution. As the days, weeks and months passed, Ponzi perceptively discovered that Zarossi could only sustain the dizzying level of returns promised by drawing on the funds of new depositors. He came to realize that if all depositors rushed in en masse to claim their due, the bank would collapse like a fragile house of cards. And when the first signs of doubt began to shake depositors in 1908, Zarossi fled precipitately to Mexico, taking the cash register with him and leaving his wife and children behind in Montreal. Although it's possible that Ponzi played a role in Zarossi's fraudulent schemes, he curiously escaped indictment for his alleged involvement. However, the wheel of fortune dealt him a different fate when he committed an undeniable offense. With calculated audacity, Ponzi went to the home of a former Zarossi client, appropriated a checkbook and, defying the law, wrote himself a tempting check for $423.58 by skillfully forging the signature of the agency's manager, Damien Fournier. But the truth came out, and Ponzi was sentenced to three years in the sinister St. Vincent de Paul prison. After painfully serving 20 long months of his sentence, Ponzi finally regained his freedom, ready to bounce back from this harrowing prison experience. However, life had another tumultuous episode in store for Ponzi, for no sooner had he regained his freedom than fate was once again dragging him down the dark path of justice. Barely a few months after his release, Ponzi was once again apprehended, this time for attempting to smuggle Italian workers onto American soil. The authorities hardly gave him time to savor his newfound freedom, sentencing him without hesitation to a further two years in an Atlanta prison. Those years behind bars, interspersed with fleeting successes and bitter failures, had forged in Ponzi an unshakable determination and an insatiable appetite for success. But how he would achieve his aspirations would take a far more sinister and fraudulent turn, forever marking Charles Ponzi's story and his indelible imprint in the annals of financial scams. As the walls of his cell closed in on him, 
Ponzi nurtured in his mind a daring plan that would take him to the pinnacle of wealth and fame. The illusion of wealth and the promise of a bright future would become the cornerstones of his next venture, a pyramid scheme that would deceive thousands of people thirsting for quick and easy gains. However, the realization of his audacious plan would not take shape until 1919, when Charles Ponzi received a letter from a correspondent in Europe. This mysterious correspondence contained an international reply coupon that would become the catalyst for his great enterprise. Illuminated by the possibilities he saw ahead, Ponzi was convinced that buying and reselling these coupons would yield spectacular returns. Full of enthusiasm and confidence, he set about promoting his idea to investors, nurturing the illusion of wealth and the promise of a bright future. In December 1919, Ponzi founded the Securities Exchange Company. The company's stated aim was to arbitrage international coupons and generate colossal profits for investors. With persuasive eloquence, he promised exceptional returns, claiming he could double their money in just 90 days. Ponzi's initial success only strengthened his all-consuming ambition. The first investors, seduced by his arguments and lured by the lure of easy money, began entrusting him with their money. The initial payments he made to satisfy these early investors helped fuel the illusion of wealth and attract more and more new participants. To maximize his profits and attract more investors, Ponzi adopted aggressive marketing tactics. He offered high commissions to referrals and used the local media to promote his financial exploits. Newspapers relayed his successes, boosting his credibility with the public and encouraging more people to join his business. The Ponzi pyramid was being built, with Charles Ponzi at the top, amassing fortunes through the continued investment of participants who firmly believed in the illusion of wealth he was selling them. However, the foundations of this enterprise were fragile and based on an unsustainable lie. The truth would eventually come out, and with it, Charles Ponzi's fraudulent empire. As Ponzi's popularity soared, the foundations of his fraudulent scheme began to crack. A growing number of investors began demanding their promised returns. However, payments were increasingly difficult to meet, as new investments were needed to support the old ones. Ponzi found himself in a race against time, juggling funds from new entrants to repay the original investors. The illusion of wealth he had so skillfully created was beginning to dissipate, and doubts were spreading among participants. Some journalists and financial experts began to question Ponzi's activities, pointing out the inconsistencies in his system and the unrealistic returns he promised. Faced with mounting pressure, Ponzi tried to reassure investors by organizing tours of his office, where he displayed stacks of mail allegedly from all over the world. He wanted to give the impression that his business was thriving and that the promised returns were real. However, these efforts were not enough to allay growing concerns. Financial authorities began to investigate Ponzi's activities. In August 1920, the U.S. Securities Exchange Company took steps to freeze the assets of the Ponzi scheme. Investigators uncovered the true mechanics of his fraudulent scheme, revealing that funds from new investors were being used to repay old ones, with no real profit being generated. Ponzi's house of cards finally collapsed. In 1920, he was arrested and charged with fraud. His company was liquidated, and investors lost most, if not all, of their money. It is estimated that investors lost around $20 million at the time, the equivalent of several hundred million dollars today. Ponzi was sentenced to prison. After his conviction, Ponzi spent several years in prison, reflecting on his actions and the scale of the scam he had orchestrated. During this period, he received little support from his family and former investors, who had lost confidence in him and were angry at having been duped. After his release in 1924, Ponzi tried to embark on new ventures, but his tarnished reputation followed him wherever he went. He tried unsuccessfully to reinvent himself as a financial consultant, but no one wanted to be associated with his name. Finally, in 1934, Charles Ponzi, once revered as a financial genius, fell from grace and became disillusioned. He sailed for Europe in the hope of finding a fresh start far from the opprobrium that followed him. But Ponzi lived out his final years in relative obscurity in Europe. He worked odd jobs to survive, but never found the success or wealth he had once coveted. As the years passed, Charles Ponzi's health deteriorated rapidly. In 1941, a cruel heart attack struck, leaving him considerably weakened, struggling against the fragility of his own body. In 1941, a cruel heart attack struck, leaving him considerably weakened, struggling against the fragility of his own body. The scars of his illness were visible, but he continued to face his inner demons. But the trials didn't end there. In 1948, a dark shadow fell over Ponzi's life as he almost completely lost his sight. Then a cruel cerebral hemorrhage struck, paralyzing his left arm and leg. His mobility was reduced to nothing, forcing him to struggle against his own once powerful and agile limbs. Like a tragic symbol of his own downfall, Ponzi was now imprisoned in a failing body. The consequences of his past actions seemed to manifest themselves physically, adding a dimension of suffering to his already tormented existence. And so, in the darkness of illness and isolation, Charles Ponzi gradually faded away. 
On January 18, 1949, at the age of 66, he left this world, leaving behind a legacy of disappointment and desolation. However, although his name has become synonymous with swindling, Charles Ponzi remains an outstanding figure in the history of financial fraud. His pyramid scheme and lure of easy wealth continue to fascinate and serve as a warning to investors the world over. Today, the name Ponzi is used to refer to any Ponzi scheme, an illegal practice in which the returns of the original investors are financed by the funds of new investors, without any real value creation. Charles Ponzi's story reminds people to be on their guard against too-good-to-be-true offers, and to exercise caution when it comes to their finances.